Thank you very much, Mr. President. Distinguished members of the Security Council, it's of course a great honour to address the Security Council and I would like to thank the Australian Presidency very much for inviting me. I'm here today to speak about how Interpol assists countries with the technical implementation and monitoring of the Security Council sanctions regimes. As UN sanctions have become more targeted, their implementation has become more complex for national authorities. Interpol can help countries to fulfill their implementation objectives, as well as enhancing the effectiveness of targeted UN sanctions for countries as they transition out of conflict. I would like to ask you to consider the following question. How does the information on the sanctions committees lists reach the implementing authorities dealing directly with the individuals and entities? How does a border control officer know what to do when a person subject to a travel ban appears in front of them? How can details obtained in an investigation by national law enforcement be identified and used to enhance the listings and improve panels of experts' reports? Mr. President, with its global cross-border network and modern tools, Interpol is well-placed to address these practical aspects of UN sanctions implementation. We achieve concrete results. Last year, the Australian police used Interpol's databases to check fingerprints and found a match with a set shared by Interpol's National Central Bureau in Washington. The individual is subject to a travel ban imposed by the Security Council and his whereabouts were previously unknown. Thus, with the use of Interpol's tools, Australia and the US were able to support Liberia in targeting a designated individual who had threatened their security. In my short statement today, I will describe Interpol's assistance in general terms and then as it relates to specific types of targeted UN sanctions. I will conclude with some ideas as to how this could be further improved. Interpol's capacity to communicate information on UN sanctions to police worldwide greatly increases their visibility. The Interpol UN Security Council Special Notice was created in response to Security Council Resolution 1617 in the year 2005 and in Interpol General Assembly Resolution. There are currently 526 valid special notices issued at the request of 10 out of the 15 sanctions committees. Interpol notices are alerts or requests for cooperation from national police, which are published and circulated in a standard, recognizable format by our General Secretariat. The special notice is one of many types of Interpol notices which include other non-criminal notices, such as those which help to locate missing persons and minors. The special notices make the information from the UN sanctions list accessible to the 25,000 authorized users in Interpol's 190 member countries, including some immigration and border control services and visitors to its public web website, where an extract is also published. Interpol supports the implementation of UN sanctions by enhancing the quality of information available to the sanctions committees. This involves seeking additional details and identifiers such as aliases, date and place of birth, identity documents, fingerprints and photographs to supplement the lists. Sometimes this information is already in Interpol's databases like in the case of an individual subject to UN sanctions who was listed in 2001. The limited data in the sanctioned list was greatly expanded when a check revealed identity information and photographs provided by Interpol's National Central Bureau in Tashkent from 1996. Authorized personnel of the Secretariat of the Sanctions Committees can conduct checks against Interpol's nominal database to search for relevant information or ask Interpol to make inquiries on their behalf. In all cases, Interpol will contact the country which owns the information for permission to share it before any data can be used. 
In addition to this support, Interpol also assists in the effective implementation of specific types of UN sanctions related to individuals, such as travel bans and asset freezing, and goods like the arms embargo and illegal natural resource exploitation. With regard to the travel ban, Interpol is directly alerted by our national central bureaus in many cases when there is an attempted violation of this measure by an individual subject to a special notice. Monthly statistics are also produced by Interpol showing which individuals and entities have been checked, when and by whom. It further information is available and when authorized to do so by the country concerned, Interpol shares details of operational checks with the sanctions committees. These details have included border crossing times and dates, and in some cases copies of new passports or pages with entry stamps. For instance, last year an individual on the travel ban list of a sanctions committee, who is the subject of a special notice, generated an alert in Interpol system when he attempted to leave Cote d'Ivoire. The national authorities prevented him from boarding the airplane and sent Interpol copies of his travel document, the statement he made, his address, and a recent photograph, all of which was communicated to the sanctions committee with the permission of Cote d'Ivoire. Concerning asset freezing, Interpol is increasingly involved in coordinating international law enforcement cooperation on this subject. The second Interpol expert working group meeting on the identification, location and seizure of assets will be held here at the United Nations in December. Over a hundred experts, including those from the sanctions committees and their panels, have been invited to produce recommendations on how to strengthen existing tools and identify new trends and challenges. As to the arms embargo, Interpol has a number of tools which can assist the sanctions committees and their panels of experts in helping countries to apply this measure by tracing the origin of trafficked weapons. Interpol regularly uses its reference table, its network and records to confirm the identification of weapons depicted on photographs provided by the Secretariat of the Sanctions Committees or panels of experts. Interpol recently assisted in the identification process of handguns used in assassinations of Afghan police officers and contacted the countries of manufacture for further details and then informed the Secretariat. Due to Interpol's broad range of activities and connections, specialized information can be provided when designations extend to the illicit exploitation of natural resources. Last year, a report on transnational ivory poaching syndicates was produced in the framework of an Interpol operation in West and Central Africa and shared with a panel of experts of a sanctions committee with the permission of national authorities in the Central African Republic. Now that the special notices successfully disseminate information from the UN, UN sanctions lists, the next step could involve an increased leverage of our network and contacts. Meetings could be organized for law enforcement officers to exchange information based on region, sanctions committees, or type of measure. Other innovations could include a compilation of national guidelines for the implementation of UN sanctions and the possibility of a new type of notice linked to asset freezing. A further initiative is training for law enforcement officers on UN sanctions and the use of special notices, building on the seminars already organized thanks to funding from the Canadian government and collaboration with the monitoring team. We were interested to hear ideas put forward during the recent high-level reviews on UN sanctions and remain keen to assist countries through our cross-border capabilities to boost their capacity for implementation. Interpol has been privileged to enjoy a close working relationship with the Security Council Affairs Division of the Department of Political Affairs, with whom we are in constant contact. We would like to take this opportunity to thank them for their unstinting work over the years and look forward to continued excellent collab collaboration. Mr. President, in conclusion, Interpol celebrates 100 years of international police cooperation this month 
and has worked with the United Nations since 1949. Our long-standing collaboration with the Security Council Sanctions Committees has evolved over the years, and I'm confident that it will continue to move from strength to strength. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I thank Mr. Stock for his briefing.